Hello, Mindsetters. You guys are tuned in to our Winter School Revision with myself, Queen. And of course, I'm not alone. I've got an awesome, awesome teacher in studio with us, John, who'll be taking us through the Maths Literacy Show today. And Mindsetters, remember that this show is all about you guys. So all you have to do is get interactive with us on our social media, that is Facebook, Twitter, and as well as our website. You can catch us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash learn extra or you can also tweet us at on, on our twitter and that is at learn extra with an x and for all the revision notes and all the schedules and all the guidelines that you guys need all you can do is log on to our website and that is at learn.mindset.co.za but first let's check out um our teacher how are you john i'm really good thanks and guys welcome to uh, another session of mathematical literacy um, this is one of my favorite sections, in fact, of mathematical literacy. It's all about maps and measurement. I hope you're excited about it too, Queen. Of course, I'm excited. And Mindsetters, as we go along throughout the show, don't forget that our World Cup competition is still running on our Facebook. You can just simply log on to our, face, uh, our Facebook page and for all the competition details and how to get winning. And once again, a congratulations to today's winner, and that is Bonga Nkunu. Very, very well done, Bonga. You are one step closer to getting yourself that grand prize, and that is the NT. Intel, Intel tablet and if you guys want to win yourself that Intel tablet all you have to do is get clicking on Facebook that's where you can find all the competition details for the grand prize and that is the Intel tablet John can you take us through the show yeah thank you <laughs> now guys remember we've got another set of teams nobody's playing tonight but there are another set of teams because we want to take a look at all the teams that are in the quarterfinals so today's teams which was Brazil and uh, Netherlands and Costa Rica. And there was a couple of, uh, there was one other which has just dropped off my memory. <laughs> They're in the quarterfinals. The next group of teams in the quarterfinals, we need you to vote on. That's Germany, France, Belgium, and Argentina. Which of those do you like the most? Well, if you're the lucky winner uh, and you get the lucky team, then you could be a winner tomorrow. Let's get into the story and let's start straight away uh, with the challenge question. Now, uh, we'll get this up onto the page very soon. Uh, we'll put it up in the break. So you'll need to watch very carefully because uh, I forgot to do that before coming on air. So let's get it, get it going. It's taken from a previous exam paper, from the February paper, and it tells us about a, a nature reserve where they're building uh, these they've got a problem with soil erosion. So they build baskets. And our question is all about the baskets. It tells us the dimensions of the Gabon baskets are as follows. Um, let's just get a pen to highlight it so we get it right. The length is 2 meters, the height is 1,5 meters, and the breadth is 1 meter. Okay? You've got the little picture there of what the basket looks like. Farmers decide to build a bigger Gabon basket. So they've built these small ones, they're now going to build some bigger ones. Let's see what it says. They want to keep the ratio of the dimensions to, of the original baskets the same. That is length to breadth to height is 2 is to 1 is to 1 comma 5. Now what they ask you to do, and that's why it's a challenge question, is to calculate the volume of the bigger basket. If the new breadth is 1,75 meters. Now, guys, that's quite a challenge question, but it's not beyond you. Think about it, and we'll be posting and going through the answer um, at, towards the end of this hour. So let's get on. Have a look at it. Make sure you've got it. Get the notes. It's in the notes, and so you can do a little bit of practice with it. Okay. We'll be posting that in the ad break, so you'll be able to post your comments after we've posted it. Okay, let's get into our first question. And this is a really interesting question. Uh, we're going to start by looking at some measurement questions, and then we'll see, we'll move on to some map questions. We might not finish all the measurement questions. Uh, we'll just play it by, by ear. And if you particularly want a question done, tell Queen about it. She's l waiting for somebody to speak to. So uh, tweet her and do this. Okay, so Matthias um, is the owner of Rosalie Farm, and he makes, uh, has, uh, cattle and he also makes hay 
tells you what hay is. They roll it up in, for winter feed. They roll it up into these cylindrical bales. Call one of these things a bale. Um, but the question that we want to do is about this. The temperature of each bale, so it deals with temperature, uh, must be controlled to prevent fermentation. That's when it goes froth. You know, if you put grass and seeds and, and you put it together with moisture, it's going to start to rot. It's going to go so that the cattle and the cows and the sheep can't, can't uh, eat it. So to prevent that, what they've got to do, it's to prevent combustion as well, fermentation and combustion. So they give some guidelines for actions to be taken for different bale temperatures. So the temperature isn't just whether it's hot or cold. The temperature is actually vitally important here. If there's too much moisture and it starts to rot, then you could poison a whole lot of animals. But if it gets too high, you could have a fire. And all of that stuff could be destroyed. So very important to monitor, monitor the temperature. And that's exactly what uh, Mateus does. So if it says to you on this, gu this uh, guideline, uh, it tells you the bale temperature, if it's lower than 120 Fahrenheit, then action to be taken, none. If it's 120 Fahrenheit to 140 Fahrenheit, then you need to separate it from the rest of the bales to cool. And if it's higher than 140 Fahrenheit, you must separate it from the rest of the bales and you must destroy it. So Matthias looks in the manual and it's got these strange readings that they're in d degrees Fahrenheit. And he needs to monitor his bales. He doesn't want an accident. He doesn't want to poison his, his cows and he doesn't want the hay to catch a light. So it says, determine, showing all the necessary calculations, uh, what does Matthias do? Oh, we've got a missing bit here. It tells us that Matthias actually goes and destroys one of the bales. And uh, w when he measured the temperature. And we, wha what we've got to do is we've got to determine whether his uh, actions were right. Now, that missing bit of information told us that uh, the temperature, and we're just going to take it, the temperature of the bale that he measured was 28 degrees Celsius. So let's work with that, and let's just make sure that we've got it right. A gremlin's crept in, so we haven't quite got the right um, information, but let's work with that. So 28 degrees Celsius. I hope you can see that. Different to Fahrenheit. Where is 28? Is it lower than 120? Hey, we better make sure that we get this right. Did Matthias destroy that bale uh, by mistake, or was he right? He'd better find out. So... Here's the formula that we need to use. To get the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, we must take 9 over 5 multiplied by the Fahrenheit temp the Celsius temperature, and then we must add 32 degrees. Okay, so we're not going to leave this to chance. We're going to get our calculator out. So let's get the calculator out and make sure where we're going to start. Now, I've got a, a scientific calculator but I want to make sure that you understand how to do this if you were using an ordinary everyday four-function calculator. Four-function meaning that it's only got multiplication, plus, and divide, and subtraction. So where would we start? If we looked at the formula, what we would recognize is the first thing we must do is we must apply bod mass. We must do the multiplication first. And this fraction here... It doesn't really matter if we take the 9 and divide it by 5 or take the 9 and multiply it by the temperature and then divide by 5. But we must do this part, if you like, first and only then must we add 32. So let's go and do it. And we're going to just use those four steps. So I'm going to take 9 and I'm going to multiply it by the temperature, which was 28 degrees. And then I'm going to say, let's divide that by the denominator, which is 5. And I'm actually going to say equals. And I want to get that as a decimal. And that says to me, it's 50,4. Now, I've no idea how hot that is, other than 50,4. It sounds pretty hot to me. But I don't know the Fahrenheit cell. But I'm not finished yet. Now the next bit, remember, is I must still add 32. 
So I'm going to take the calculator and I'm going to say, let's add 32 degrees to it. And if we add 32, what will we get the total? So the, the answer in 28 degrees Celsius is equal to a temperature in Fahrenheit, having done it on the calculator, of 82,4 degrees Fahrenheit. So if Matthias went ahead and destroyed that bale, look where it is. It's below 120. No, he didn't have to do anything. He certainly didn't have to burn it. He went and burnt it. Not a good idea. He didn't do his calculations correct. Don't know what formula he was using, but he clearly got an answer of above 140. And it's way below 140. It's only 80 odd. Okay. So we need to recognize to work carefully, but I hope that gives you an idea of temperature conversions. I think that you're more or less bound to get one of these temperature conversion questions either in paper one or in paper two. You need to make sure. Of course, you don't need to remember the formula. But you need to be familiar with working with that formula and understand that you've got temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, temperature in degrees Celsius. Let's move on to the next question. And I think there's just time for us to get through this one. It tells us that Matthäus has to transport the bales with a trailer. The photograph below shows an example of a stack of two layers of bales loaded onto a trailer. So I don't know if it's very clear to you, but we've got one bale there, we've got another one 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 there, we've got, one there, we've got a last one there. But what this indicates is on the bottom row, it's actually a double layer. So that's two. 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, all together. Okay, you got it? Hope so. Then the next one, he puts single layers. And I'm going to change the color of the pen and say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's what he's got. So at the bottom, he's got six of these rows. There were six rows all together. And on this one, one, two, three, four, five rows. So on this one, there are five rows. Let's see what else, he, what else it tells us. Uh, only the bottom layer consists of two rows of six bales, each uh, to ensure balance. So that's why he's doing it. The second row of bales consists of one row, and there are five bales. Each subsequent, hey, that's a big word, <laughs> subsequent, queen, can you help me there? Subsequent, what does it mean? I'm not sure, John, but I'm sure you know what it okay, means. Okay, <laughs> uh, that's, that's a fair pass. Um, <laughs> so subsequent means the one after. So we've got the first one, then the next one. The subsequent one means the following one, the one that comes after. Okay, subsequent, in sequence, uh, the next one, if you like, uh, has to be stacked one less bale than the previous layer. So let's have a look at that. It then goes on and says, determine the total number of bales that can be loaded onto the trailer in this way if four layers of bales are to be stacked. Okay, so let's take a look at our picture. And we recognize, and I'm just going to use my eraser because I think that's going to be, be useful. First of all, we're going to say in this row, the first row, there are six rows. In this one, there are five. Now, that's the first row. First. This is the second. How many did it say we needed? Four layers, eh? All together. So what's the subsequent layer? Queen, come, help us. <laughs> the next one. It's got to be one less. Five, so what's that going to be? One less than five is? Four. Four. And the fourth layer, let's just draw them in. You know what? I think it's a good idea. So let's draw them in. They're going to fit in there. One, two, three, four. In the space. That makes sense, eh? Um, okay, so that's the, the, that layer. We're going to then go to the fourth layer. And how many are going to be in the fourth layer? Well, you've got it. It's three. 
We're going to have three, and I'm going to make them pink again. One, two, three. So what we've got to do, because we're almost out of time, is we've got to count up how many there are in total. So we recognize the bottom layer has got 12, because remember it was a double layer. Then we've got five. Then we've got four. Then we've got three. So let's do it. Seven and five is 12, and 12 is 24. And I guessed my answer. Just let's make sure that that's what the question was. Determine the total number of bales that can be stacked. I reckon it's 24. Okay. Guys, ch check it out. See if you agree with me. Okay. Let's go to Queen. Well, mine says the teams are actually up. It is Germany, France, Belgium, and Netherlands. So don't forget about our competition. Get your favorite team out there. Share and like the, pay, the photo that you've selected. And get yourself winning and winning more and more and more prizes. Mine says we're also giving away airtime from Vodacom. So do not despair if you do not make it for the Intel tablet competition because there's more competitions coming up. But for now, John? Let's go to an ad break. Let's take an ad break. See you when we're back. Welcome back, Mindsetters. If you've just tuned in, where have you been? But don't worry, because we're not that far along in the show yet. And you guys are a bit too quiet on our social media. Remember, we are here for you. We're here to answer all the questions that you have for John. So get clicking, guys. Get interacting with us simply by typing on our Facebook page. That is at facebook.com forward slash learn extra or get tweeting at learn extra with an X and for all the notes that you need the guidelines remember you can log on to our website and that is at learn.mindset.co.za and we still have the competition running it only closes tomorrow at 3 30 p.m. so you have plenty of time mindsetters come on come on stay with us John can we continue thanks, <laughs> thanks so much Green we are, we're having a lot of fun here hope you are too now we're doing one more question of measurement and let's see if we can get as much done to finish this question as possible. What you'll notice is the next part of the question doesn't seem to be that involved with measurement, though. And this is what you need to remember. It's typical of a paper two type question. You also need to remember your basic calculations and your graphing and just some calculations in general. So let's have a look. Mateus calculates that each cow needs to feed an average of 12 kilograms of hay daily. This is in winter. Now each bale weighs 1,440. So we mustn't forget that. I'm just going to write it over here. 1,440 kilograms. Okay. We're asked to determine the maximum number of days one bale will last if it is used to feed 10 cows. Okay, so let's get this very clear. One cow eats 12 kilograms a day. So if one cow eats 12 kgs, then what's 10 cows going to do? This is a ratio problem. And we can set it out like this. We'll eat 12. What did I do? to the 1 to make it 10. Well, I'm multiplied by 10. So what must I do to the 12 kilograms? I must clearly take the 12 kilograms and multiply that by 10. So if I do that, I will find that they eat 120 kilograms in one day. So remember, this is a 1 a day for 10 cows is equivalent to 120 kilograms. How much, what's the mass, the total mass of the bale that we've got? Because we want to find out how many days one bale is going to last. Well, we had it up there. We said it was 1,440. So put the kilograms with the kil kilograms, 1,440 kilograms. And we want to know what the X is, what the num missing number of days is. So... This is what the way that I would do it. I would then have to say to myself, what do I do to 120 to get 1440? 
The only way that I can think of doing it, because I'm not going to chance doing it in my head, is to take this number here, and I'm going to divide it by that number to check out my factor that I must multiply by. So I'm going to say, start with the thing that I've got at the end, 1, 4, 4, 0, and I'm going to divide by 1, 20, and the factor that I get is 12. I'm going to check that that's the, the right answer, and I'm going to check it like this. I'm going to say to myself, 12 multiplied by 120, how long, how many, how much is that? 1440. So, one day, to get to the missing number of days, must multiply one day by 12. So that tells me it's going to last 12 days. So there's my answer. Okay. Now, guys, you need to set this out carefully, and you need to give the final answer um, very clearly as well. So determine the maximum number of days. Uh, one bale will last. So if correctly, if I wanted to say it right, one bale will last 10 cows 12 days. Great. There we are. Let's go and check the next one. Because the next one is a little bit more complicated. It says write down a simplified formula. Okay, so it gives exactly the same information as we had before that can be used to calculate the maximum number of days one bale will last if it is used to feed a number of cows. Now they're not telling you how many cows there are. They're just saying the maximum number of days that it will last. So what do we know? We know that 1440 um, needs to feed one, how many times can it feed one cow? Well, one cow eats 12 kilograms. So let's work out. 144 divided by 12. And what we're going to recognize, 1440 divided by 12 gives us 120. So, okay. So get this, guys. We know that this is the factor. We've always got to multiply. doesn't matter how many cows you've got. We've got to take the mass of the total bale divided by the mass that one cow eats, uh, and we get 120. And then we can say this. L look carefully. We can say the number of cows times the number of days. Must multiply together to give us 120. Why am I saying that? Because if you test it, you'll see that if we had one cow, and we would say, how many days is it going to last us? Remember, if it was, it's going to eat 12 kilograms, uh, it would need to last... Uh, it, what do I need to multiply this by to give me 100, uh, 120? 120. Does that make sense? 120 times 12 will give me the four, 1,400. Yes, it does make sense. So be very careful about this. There's the formula that we've got set up. So we've got number of cows times number of days is 120. The next part of the question says to use the equation that we've attained above so in that previous part, and we're asked to draw a graph showing the maximum number of days one bale can last if it is used to need a number of cows. So remember, we've got a grid here, and we've got a question of number of cows and number of days. And we need to make sure that we get this right. The product of those two will always add up or multiply together, shall I say, to 120. So I'm going to say one day over there, and let's, let's just check. If we got to um, 12, uh, let's just make this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Make it like that, make that 0. And what we're going to do here 
is the total number of cows. Now, if I only had one cow, that would take 120 days to get through. So I want to get the maximum at 120. So I'm going to say 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. So let's just do that as 120. And let's do that as 100. And this is 80. This is 60. This is 40. This is 20. And this is 0. Remember, these are day. Th these are that's the days. And no, sorry, I've gone wrong. Um, I said that one cow. That's right. No, I'm not. I'm not wrong. Um, I think I'm right. Uh, if we made that 120, uh, and this is one cow, we just might need to increase the numbers here a little bit. Uh, I think my scale's a little bit short over here. So I'm going to make this one two rather, if I remember correctly when I was planning this. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Yes, that's it. Fourteen, sixteen. And see if we can go there. So if one cow ate the, the, the hay, it would take 120 days. If there were two cows, they would take 60. If there were four cows, now look at this. It's, it's going to go down. Four times what is going to give me 120? Four times 30 is going to give me 120. And if I went uh, six times what is going to give me 120? Six times I'm going to need to get to to get to 120, 6 times 20 will give me 120. And uh, if I go to 12, I'd recognize that 12 times 10. Now, look at the graph. Here's the graph that I'm going to, to draw. It goes down like that. And, and so one can see that it's going to be quite difficult to um, measure off on this particular scale. But the important thing is, that if two cows take 60 days, we can start to get a prediction of the total number of cows. You're not really going to have, be able to, on one bale, support the cows for much longer than 12 days. If you, uh, sorry, uh, for 10 days. So there's t 10 days over there. 12 cows, 10 days. Yeah, we're going we're to be fine with that. Um, I think that's, that's about right. Um, so we've got the total there. Have we answered the question? Let's see what the question says. Showing um, the maximum number of days one bale can last if it is to feed a certain number of cows. The maximum number of days, yes, there we are. These are the days. This is maximum days for one bale. And this is, we need to label the axes, number of cows. Don't get it mixed up. I'm sure you got that. Guys, we've got time for the last bit of the question. And this is the tricky one. It tells us that Matthias has a herd of 150 dairy cows. He needs to prepare hay to last from the 1st of May to the 31st of August. He estimates he needs six trailer loads of hay. Wow, that's quite a lot. Remember, one trailer... Load gave us 24 bales. So don't lose this. He reckons he needs six of them. Um, he also has 150 cows. How many days is he wanting to feed them for? It's from the 1st of May to the 31st of August. And right there we have a time problem. Okay, so we count it. May, June, July... August, four months. But they're not all 30 days. We know that May is 31 days. We know that uh, May, June is 30 days. We know that July is 31 days. And we know that August is 31 days. So the total that we've got here is 123 days. Now, unfortunately, our graph doesn't really help us too much. Because the graph was for one bale, but it might be useful in a certain sense. So we know we want to keep 150 cows busy for and fed for 123 days. How many bales are we going to need? Hey, that's quite a tricky question. I think, you know what? 
you need to have a think about it and see if you can give me the answer and we'll come back to it directly after the break. Queen, over to you. Yes, man setters, we are giving you a chance to think about this answer. Think very carefully about it and tell us the answer on our social media. But for now, let's take a quick ad break. I'll see you after this. Welcome back. Welcome back, Mindsetters. You are tuned in to Matt Literacy, Winter School with myself, Queen, and John. And Mindsetters, remember, we really want to hear from you guys. So please interact with us on our social media. And also remember that we want to hear if we've been doing well. So we've got a feedback survey on our Facebook. There's a link for it. All you have to do is simply click on it and give us all the feedback that you have for us. And you could also possibly win yourself a tablet. But John, I think we're being too generous to the mindsetters. Well, you know what, Queen? We always love to support them. And there are even more competitions coming your way, guys. So don't you miss out. There's some amazing things that we've got lined up for you. So stay on the page, watch the page, and keep your ears peeled. You don't be on the page and you don't watch every one of the live shows. You might just <laughs> miss out. So there's my challenge to you. Keep watching and don't miss the draw on Friday. Even if you don't do business studies or accounting, make sure you're tuned in around about four o'clock. Okay, shall we go? Let's continue. Okay, cool. So guys, there are different ways of doing this. Probably the easiest way is the way I'm going to show you now. I'm going to say to you, we start with 150 cows. Let's say, how much do those cows eat each day? Each of them eats 12 kilograms. Okay? And how many days do we need to keep them fed for? That's 123. So this will give us the total mass of food that these cows will eat for the 123 days. So let's get the calculator out because I'm not going to chance this one um, on my mental arithmetic. Let's start with 150 cows. And we're going to multiply that by 12 kilograms multiplied by 123 days. And we get this huge number. Okay? Queen, you're going to have to help me here. It's, uh, Let's just see exactly what it is. It is uh, 221,400. So I'm going to write it down. 221,400 kilograms. Okay. Now, how much did one, ki one bale weigh? What was the mass of one bale? So we've got the total mass of food that we need. But we know that one bale had a mass of 1,440 kilograms. So I reckon if this is the total mass, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the mass of one bale and I'm going to divide it into that. So there we go. We've got that mass. And let's divide it by the mass of one bale, one four. Four, zero, and see how many bales we need. Well, it gives us an answer of 153,75. Now, guys, we can't have a comma 75 bale, so we might as well take the whole thing. So we're going to say uh, the number we need is 155 bales. So 155 bales is what we need. Have I answered the question? No, not yet. Let's take a look. Remember what it said. He estimated that he needed six trailer loads. He was just estimating. He was kind of going by gut feel. Oh, it's about six. If he got it wrong, he had too little food, cows would go hungry. If he had too much, then he's wasted a whole trailer load. So how many trailer loads does he need? Does he need six or what? Let's have a look and see. He needs 150, but remember that what we said was that there were 24 bales on one trailer. On one trailer load. Now, you can't have 25. Only 24 can fit onto one trailer. Uh, so 
let's have a look at how many trailer loads he's going to need. We're going to take 155, um, 155 divided by 24, and we're going to see that we need more than 6. It says 6,45. So he estimated 6 trailers. We find that it's 6,45. Now, let me not do that because that looks like 4,8. 4, 5 trailers. So is he going to have enough food? No, unfortunately. He's going to have to pack a seventh trailer. He's going to either do, uh, look, he could do six and a half trailer loads. But six isn't going to be enough. If he only took six, cows would go hungry. Not a good idea. Okay, so I hope you can see that this is practical even for something like farming. You can't just guess things out. You've got to do some calculations. So now we're going to move on. And we're going to go on to our second type of question. We started with measurement. And we're going to do a next section on maps and measurement. Uh, so, so maps and looking at maps. And let's see how much of this we can do. Now, I really like this question because it's about the Southern African Large Telescope. Now, guys, this isn't a science lesson. Um, even though I love science and I really enjoy astronomy, but this is a, the most amazing telescope built down in Sutherland. And... Um, we, we're at the leading edge of astronomy. And even uh, I would encourage you to get an interest in astronomy. South Africa is the place to be if you're interested in astronomy. So it tells us that the photograph above shows the northern view or elevation. So this side is north. Okay? And we're told that it's near a small town in the northern Cape, South Africa. And this diagram below here shows us the different working parts. So notice there's the alignment mirror. There's the control room. This is the actual telescope inside. This is the dome. So if we look back and we start to feature some things, that must be the dome. And this is the alignment tower. This is the tower. Okay? And it says, first question, which view... Does the diagram above show? Hmm. Let's have a careful look at the diagram. And notice something. The alignment mirror is over there. The dome we can't really reference because it's a curved surface. What do we know about direction? Now, Queen, I want you to come and stand up here for a minute. Just come off your chair. Come and I join me here. I wonder what We're going to not do anything. No, it's <laughs> fine. I'm going to put a glass of water in your hand. Okay. okay? Uh, just face the camera over there. All now, right. guys, let's pretend that Queen is facing north. And look at where, she, where the glass of water is. It's on her left hand. I'm facing her, and it's on my left-hand side. It's on her right-hand side. You got that? Now, if I went and stood on the, this side, behind her, just move forward a little bit, Queen, and it's now looking behind her, then notice that it's on my right-hand side. It's over here. I can see the glass of water. So it depends on where we're looking at, Queen, where we're going to see the glass of water. Is it on the left? Is it on the right? Is it in the back? Is it in the front? We look over here. Now, the telescope picture, let's just go back to that one. We noticed... In the photograph, thanks, Queen. You can go back to your 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 uh, seat over there. We noticed that this tower was on the left-hand side, and we were told that this is the north slope. So remember that the tower is on the left, and this is the north. So if we go and look at the diagram now, notice where the tower is. See that it's on the right-hand side. It's moved over. It's no longer on the north side. So the, if the tower was on the left, we'd have to be facing at the back of this diagram. So the back of that diagram is north. So which side are we looking at? This must be south. It has shifted a little bit. So when they marked this question, they also gave a little bit of a, a leniency. It didn't have to be exactly south. hope you can see that this view is from the south. So we're looking from the south. South the southern view of the telescope. Next one. And here's one of those that uh, we've done something similar. Calculate the height of the mirror, uh, alignment tower, 
in centimeters. And we're asked to round off your answer to the nearest 10 centimeters. Now, guys, um, we're told that it's 110 foot, and we're told that 10 meters is 32,8 foot. So let's do take that information down. We want it as 110 foot, and we're told that 10 meters is 32. So 10 meters is the equivalent of 32,8 foot. Sure, that's quite tricky. Now, guys, I hope you, you got it right because this is about ratio again, ratio and proportion and making sure that we've got things right. So what I do when I like to look at one of these, I'm going to say to myself, the first thing is that I want to get, um, I've got 110 foot, I want to get it into meters. So I'm going to put the foot under the foot, and I'm going to say 110 foot. I know that 32,8 feet, okay, old-fashioned measurement, is equivalent to 10 meters. But that doesn't help me very much. What I'm really going to want to do is I'm going to say to myself, so how much is one foot? So I always try and get one. So I'm going to say one foot. What did I do to go from 32 to 1? Well, that's clear. I divided by 32,8. So I'm going to take the 10 meters and I'm going to divide by 32,8. And uh, the calculator is going to come in useful here. So where are we going? We're going to say um, 10 meters divided by 32,8. Got it? And what does that give me? It tells me it's 0, 0,3, 0, 0,34. I'm going to round that off to 0, 0,3. 0, 0,3 meters. So one foot, 0, 0,3 meters. Now, guys, important thing here was in the question, it actually said leave your answers in centimeters. So I could convert from here, say 0, 0,3 meters is actually 30 centimeters. So one foot is 30 centimeters, roughly, just a, little bit more, just a little bit more than 30 centimeters. How many do we need? We need 110 of these. So if we want 110 foot or feet, then we're going to need to multiply this side by 110. If we do to the one side, we must do to the other. So we're going to multiply this by 110. And if we do that, get it clear, one, uh, sorry, 30 multiplied by 110 gives us an answer of 3,300 um, centimeters. 3,300 centimeters. Okay? Hope you see exactly how that's working. Make sure that you've got it right. And make sure that you check your calculations to see that you haven't made a mistake. Now, Queen, are there any questions at the moment? There aren't any questions right now, but mindsetters, we are here for you. So get those questions coming in. Okay, we're going to carry on. We're going to press on. And uh, let's see if we've got time for this next part of the question, which we're going to try and get through. Uh, uh, we've got an international astronomer, Mr. Varkis, and he comes to Cape Town and he's flown in and he gets to a town called Worcester and he wants to get to Sutherland. And he's told to do the following things. He's told to turn right to the N1 and travel 125 kilometers. Turn left to the R354, and travel 110 kilometers. Turn right to the R356, travel 13,7 kilometers, and then turn left and go for 4,9 kilometers, and your destination will be on your right. We're then given a map, okay? I'm just breaking this down very simply and quite quickly for you, because we want to make sure that we get this as much of this question done. It says, clearly indicate the route Mr. Varkis should travel from Worcester to get to Sutherland. So the first problem with one of these is that we need to find Worcester. And there is Worcester, there. There's Worcester. So what was the first thing that he needed to do? Let's go quickly. 
uh, he needed to turn onto the N1 and travel 120 kilometers. So he's at Worcester, there's the N1, and he's going to travel along this road. Then the next thing that it says, he must turn to the R354. So there's the R354, and he's going to turn left, and he's going to go that distance. Then the next part said, go turn right onto the 356, and then turn left. And the 356 is that one, and then he's going to turn left, and there is that Sutherland, and that's the salt telescope. Okay, I think we've come to the end. We've already come to the end. Ad break? Sorry. No, it's no, an ad break. Not don't. an end yet. <laughs> I'm rushing things. Mine sitters, I'm sure you'd be so sad already. No, it can't be the end yet. But personally, I think this was a very interesting question, John, uh, because it teaches us a lot about our country as well. It's not only mathematically inclined. Let's go to that break because there's some All more right. to do. Let's go to that ad break. We'll see you just now. Welcome back, Mindsetters. You are still with myself on the Maths Literacy Winter School Revision. And remember, Mindset, that we guys, that we are a huge community on Facebook. We're one big family, and we're here to help each other out. We've got Mindsetters like Tabani, who are posting about a great 12 exam preparation Facebook page that you guys can get clicking and liking for more helps and support. John, let's continue. Excellent. Guys, get into your study groups. Remember, this is the great 12 week. There's going to be lots of repeats over the weekends, so make sure you tune in, and the, our help desk is always available to you. So let's make sure that we get through this last question as well. So let's go to it. Mr. Varghese on his journey. It tells us that Mr. Varghese took how long? It took him two hours and 56 minutes to reach his destination. Remember, he's going from Worcester to so he's starting at Worcester, and he was ending up at Sutherland over there. Um, we asked to calculate his average speed. Now, in map work questions, I can almost again guarantee you, you're going to either be asked to calculate distance, or you're going to be asked to calculate time, or you're going to be asked to calculate speed. They've given us the formula that total distance is equal to average speed times time. So... We're going to need to rearrange this formula, but first of all, let's get the missing pieces of information. We're told the average speed, or the time that he took, was two hours. So we've got the time. We've got time. Uh, we asked to find average speed, but we don't know distance. So how are we going to get distance? Let's go back to the map. We remember, he started at Worcester, and he passed through this little town called the Duins. And then he went from De Duins to Toes River. But from Toes River, he went all the way over there, and we marked this on the, on the map, all the way to Sutherland. Okay? And if we were really careful, we would recognize that that distance, we could have added up these figures that we were given in the instructions. So we could add up all those figures. Or we could add up the figures that are on this, uh, sorry, on this table here, over there. So there are different ways of doing it. We could have taken that figure and that figure, and then taken the figure to, to there, and we've got a double check of ourselves. I'm actually going to use these figures here, because that's what the directions that he was given, and let's hope that he followed the directions. So we're going to get the total distance, reading the figures, 125, plus 110, plus 13,7, plus 4,9. And I think I've put everything in that as it should have been, and let's hope that that's true. And we get the final answer of 253,6, 253,6. Let's put it down as my total distance, 253. 3,6. Now, I want average speed in kilometers per hour, but I'm told it's 50, uh, 2 hours and 56 minutes. Guys, I can't work with hours and minutes. They're not the same unit. So what I'm going to have to do very quickly, I'm going to have to take 56 and I'm going to divide it by 60 to convert it to the number of hours. 
in a decimal fraction. It gives me 0 0,93 as the hours. And remember, it was 2 hours. So I'm going to add plus 2. And that gives me my time, which gives me 2,93. So the time is 2,93, and I'll round it off. Now we want average speed. So what are we going to do? We're going to say this is average speed. We don't know what it is yet, but we know that it needs to be multiplied. Now to get it on its own, I'm going to divide both sides by the 2,93. So I'm going to take my calculator. I'm going to clear that because I don't really want that. I'm going to go 253 comma 6, and I'm going to divide by the time that it took, which is 2,93 in hours. So I've got kilometers divided by hours. It gives me my speed of 86. Now, let's see if he was breaking the speed limit. No, 86,55. So he seemed to keep within the speed limit. That's his average speed. Okay. Guys, that's about it from me. Thanks, Queen. Over to you. Thank you so much, John, for all your hard work. Mindsetters, unfortunately, we have reached the end of the session. But do not despair because we will be back with more tomorrow. Remember, the winter school revision for Matrix ends tomorrow. And we are on our third on Friday, day. Sorry. On Friday. Friday. It ends on Friday. Oh, tomorrow's only the fourth day. It ends on Friday. So you still have plenty of time to enter into our competitions. We're giving away that Intel tablet for our World Cup competition. We're also giving away a tablet for your feet. Feedback. And that is going to be it for me, Mindsetters. But I will see you definitely, definitely soon. So don't worry about it. Bye.